out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad. I'm a historical weapons and armour enthusiast, as well as a practitioner of historical swordsmanship, specifically medieval European swordsmanship. With that foundation of knowledge, I want to take a look at the weapons from Monster Hunter to see how effective they would be. Now, I understand this is a fantasy <laughs> setting, okay? And usually when I have a look at fantasy kind of weapons, I do a bit of both. I look at how practical they would be in the real world if you're just a regular person, but I always like to, of course, try and make the concession that, all right, how effective would they be in their own setting with the uh, kind of concession that you could actually use them? Say you have the strength to use them and that their weight distribution seems to be somewhat similar or the weight distribution is uh, in such a state that would reflect the way in which they are used. Because a lot of these weapons, especially like the great sword that we're going to be looking at, uh, if you held it out like that in front of you, you would simply tip over. It doesn't matter how strong you would be, okay? If you do not weigh uh, like as much or more than this great sword, the point of balance between you and the greatsword would go past your feet, which would just make you tip over. Like, you could lift it up like that, and it could be lighter as anything if you've got superhuman strength, but if your weight is simply not enough and you hold it out, you're going to tip over. That, that, that's the reality. With this image in particular, it's interesting because you see how far his foot is forward. That is kind of indicating that there's a lot of forward weight, perhaps not as much as the weight of his own body, but in reality, if you had a weapon like this, like, I don't know how dense these bones are, but if we're comparing them somewhat to the same area around steel, but having said that, that could be why they make them out of bone, because they're lighter. I don't actually know, but that could be an interesting kind of world-building thing that these bones are as strong or stronger than metal, like steel, iron, but they're lighter, which means that they could get away with making them much, much bigger. That's kind of, I, that would be a cool explanation. I would really like that. But uh, we're not really going to be going into that too much. We're going to pretend they are the weight that it's kind of reflected in how they're used. And so you can hold them out like that and not tip over, which actually means that it wouldn't nearly be as heavy as what it should be for its size, density, and the kind of ballpark figure we could estimate what material, you know, weight it would have. And so with those concessions made, uh, these are the type of weapons you would want to use to fight giant monsters, like, you know, dragons, dinosaurs, things, all that fun stuff in Monster Hunter. And we're just going to go through each weapon a bit. I'm going to share some of my thoughts, drawing from the foundational understanding I have in medieval combat, how weapons work and all those things. So, well, we kind of started with the greatsword already. Let's dive right into that. The greatsword we're specifically looking at right now is called the Great Wyvern Jawblade. And it's a more iconic kind of greatsword in the Monster Hunter franchise that appears in multiple games. And this one, as you can see, is actually made out of the jaw of a Wyvern, where you can see the teeth marks and they've separated and just sharpened up one edge and attached a handle to it. And interestingly, in some cases, or in some games, the handle actually retracts into the, the bone a bit so you can carry it easier. So this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of one of the things I like about Lots of Hunter. It's so over the top and ridiculous. But we're just going with it. Like, we're just going to say, okay, let's pretend you can even lift this thing. And, uh, and uh, like, we're going that way. This type of weapon, interestingly enough, would actually be quite effective against large creatures. Why? Well, it emphasizes one of the advantages that swords have, their cutting ratio. Now, a sword, you can cut on any part of the blade, you know, if it's sharp enough and all that stuff, all right? You can cut lower on the blade, you can cut higher on the blade. That's actually an advantage with swords specifically, because when you compare them to, say, against axes, the cutting ratio on an axe is a lot smaller, and if you miss the cut, you could hit on the shaft and bounce off and things. And so you have more options in which part of the blade you can actually strike with, but on top of that, you actually have higher chances of striking with the cutting portion of the blade, whereas other weapons you could actually miss the cutting portion. But then on top of that, the monsters we're dealing with are so big that you can land a strike where the entire cutting ratio sinks into the target. Contrast that with like a sword on a person and you strike an arm, okay, even with the, a really long cutting ratio like a sword has, you're not technically going to be using that much of the blade unless you do a big long draw cut and slice through. And most cuts actually have some level of movement, so even if you don't do a big long draw cut, you could probably use, you know, up to this length of blade in the actual cut if it's sliced through an arm or something like that. But rarely do you use the entire cutting ratio of a sword against a person. But in a monster hunter setting, these things are so big that you could sink the entire 
entire blade into a monster, like a whole thing, and that means the level of damage you can do potentially against these monsters uh, is far, far greater. Like the cut you could do against a giant, you know, like dragon or dinosaur T-Rex or something like that could be the whole length of the blade. And these blades are as long or longer than even a person standing up at times. And so that would leave a much larger cut, say in comparison to an axe. If you like swung an axe through, I don't know, the, uh, the ribs or something of a big giant monster, the overall cut and depth of the cut would be smaller in comparison to this huge sword. And so that actually gives a bit of an advantage to this crazy big sword. Interesting thing that happens in Monster Hunter World, which is the second most recent Monster Hunter uh, franchise, there's a new one that's just right, like been released very recently, is that they do have a sweet spot on the great sword that when you strike with it, it does more damage. And it's not the tip, it's not the base, it's, like, it's actually very comparable to where the standard sweet spot is for a lot of swords. And it's right here, and just we'll show you with a graphic, uh, which I think is brilliant actually. That reflects something quite realistic with real swords, because there is a sweet spot on real swords that when you strike with them, you do more optimal damage, though the geometry of the sword really affects this, because some swords can actually cut much more efficiently at the tip than other swords. Swords that are focused on thrusting and having a smaller tip with less mass there, obviously cut less efficiently. Uh, but swords that are, have still a lot of meat at the tip can still cut quite well there. But overall, I give the Grey Sword a thumbs up, and from my own time playing Monster Hunter, the Great Sword is kind of my favourite, and I just want to say, I really like the anime they didn't go to the full extent of how realistic it would be, like if you swung that sword, it would pull you with it and you'd just go flying, but they do show the momentum carrying the user to some extent in the animations in Monster Hunter, which I thought was brilliant, where you do this hit and you kind of fling forward and then you do a flip and you pull it over and you do another hit. I, I just, I thought that was brilliant and I loved it. Uh, so at the moment, maybe it's a bit of bias because I always did favor the, the great sword. It is my favorite. I should say as well, by the way, Monster Hunter Great Swords are not historical great swords. There is a historical great sword, which is some of the biggest combat used great swords in history. And these are things like the Zweihanda, Montante, or just really, really big two-handed sword. Uh, and uh, these are a bit, they're not different. You can see they have much more slender, thin blades. So, because in the real world, we are restricted to reality, physics, and the actual strength and weight a regular person has. So to make such big, when I say big, long swords practical, the blades of course are made very, very thin, point of balance lower to the blade to keep them functional and usable and so I wouldn't really I caught to call these great swords in the sense that uh, they are really long they're, they're not the real historical they are very different to the real historical great swords is my point honorable mention to this great sword from Monster Hunter which has a rocket attached to the top end <laughs> Now, I've already talked a little bit about rocket-propelled weapons, but that was more in the context of hammers. Uh, there's a video there on them. So if you want to hear my thoughts, check out that video. Uh, because <laughs> oh, it's just so ridiculous and over the top. Uh, but funnily enough, maybe it could work. Check out the video. So the next weapon we'll look at in the Monster Hunter franchise is the longsword, which is actually also one of my favorite weapons. Interesting thing about the longsword is that the proportions and lengths of this longsword is far more in common with the great swords of medieval history, depending on the design, because the long swords of Monster Hunter are actually based more off of the Nodachi or Odachi the, the, or the Zanbato, the really giant Japanese style swords. Now, what's interesting, in some cases, I actually think the translation of uh, Nodachi translates to long sword. And so perhaps they're using the literal translation of that from Japanese to English. I don't know what they call it in the Japanese version. Maybe we'll bring it up or we'll, do, we'll find out uh, in editing. Uh, uh, but it's called the longsword, and maybe they're calling it the longsword because the medieval longsword is much smaller. <laughs> it's still two-handed, okay? It's the classic knightly two-handed sword. It's smaller than the great sword, but the length of the longsword in Monster Hunter is, like, actually longer than the great swords of medieval European history. And some, and there are variants of the longsword that actually have a, a cruciform, you know, shape. They're not the curved kind of Nodachi swords. They have a cross guard, double bladed, and they're, like I said, those ones, look, I would like, they're more in line with medieval great swords. But anyway, so all the benefits that I kind of talked about in regards to the great sword do kind of apply with the long sword from Monster Hunter. Interesting, in some cases, the long sword 
does actually look to have a longer blade than a greatsword. The difference, like the big difference here, is weight. And so, and they show this in the game as well. The greatsword is a slow weapon, all right? Cumbersome, you have to do these big wind-up swings and it throws your body around. The longsword is a little bit faster. It's kind of fast for one of the largest weapons, but not the fastest in the game. So they have that. And if we were to enter the Monster Hunter universe, and with the concessions in play, there are certain uh, physics results that should still apply. For instance, weight causing greater penetrating power. And that would be the difference between the greatsword and the longsword. The greatsword has insane weight and just mass behind it. And so the momentum and the cutting power of that would be crazy. And that's what the longsword would be lacking, okay? It would have less weight driving force to really go through. And so what would often happen, especially with these giant creatures, the longsword would hit and it wouldn't penetrate as deep. And what would happen is the blade would hit and then curve and then kind of slice on the edge and not penetrate it deeply, but you get these long kind of slicing cuts with it. And then the cutting ratio would still be very, very high because it could slice all along that really long blade. And so it's interesting. We can sometimes get hung up, and I, I can do that as well, with the correct terms. Like a long sword is supposed to be this. But for as a descriptive term, this is a very long sword. It actually uh, applies to the design. It is like, maybe you call it the really long sword or something. Um, but I think for just the descriptive name, it applies because as we kind of compare it to even the greatsword, it seems to be a bit even longer than the greatsword. But that's the pro and con there, yet it still gets a lot of advantages. There is another big advantage that the long sword would get. And remember, it's a disadvantage that not as deep a cuts compared to the greatsword, but this is where it would be able to outperform the greatsword, and that is in penetration, all right? If you actually did a thrust, you could, and look how long this thing is. And so even with a big, you know, creature and stuff like that, if you got a really solid thrust all the way to the hilt, you could still reach some of these creatures' hearts. And that's a lethal, you know, penetrating thrust and so that's its big advantage. In the Monster Hunter game itself, there's one thrusting animation, which I find a little odd, because to me, that is missing one of the most devastating uses that this weapon could have. And it is the thrusting capacity because it's so long and it's more pointed than the greatsword. This is the thing that a lot of people don't actually know. I addressed this in my video, How Deadly Were Swords in Real Life. Thrusts tend to be more deadly than cuts, especially cuts that are superficial, okay? You can get a cut across your whole chest, but if it doesn't penetrate the rib cage, you can survive that depending if you can fix the infection and blood loss. But if you can mitigate those things, a lot of cuts are surprisingly survivable. But thrusts, on the other hand, like thrusts, when I talk about head, neck, and uh, torso, where all your vital organs are, very dangerous. Thrusts on limbs and stuff, depending if you hit an artery or not, but if you miss an artery, thrusts on legs and arms are very survivable. But vital organs on the main body, thrusts are actually far more deadly than cuts. And this is why I think Monster Hunter misses something here, because this, again, I feel would be one of the great devastating utilities and advantages of this longsword. Thrusting into the heart or vital organs of these creatures should be crazy good. Now, there is the Spirit Blade ability that the Longsword has, and that is where you finish a certain combo, it powers up the cutting ability of the blade. That's kind of entering more magical territory, and I want to really more focus on the practical function that these swords would have against giant monsters if you could use them, when I say use them, wield them, spin, throw them around in the same way that they do in Monster Hunter, not necessarily whip out the magical abilities that uh, you can uh, summon with the weapons in the game itself. And so overall, I actually think the longsword is a really good weapon, but they're not employing it correctly in Monster Hunter because of the, like one thrusting animation, like this could be a thrusting, devastating killer weapon, right, really? And so there we go, those are my thoughts on the longsword specifically, and now we'll move on to the next one. The sword and shield combo in Monster Hunter. This has got some more interesting elements to it than you might consider at face value. We should really ask, why did people use shields historically? Shields are a phenomenal defensive weapon. They were very useful, but not everyone always used them. There are some cases in which shields probably still would have been preferred, but weren't always used. Uh, Self-defense is one of them. Now, granted, if anyone knew that they were going to be waylaid by bandits, uh, even in history, and they knew it ahead of time, they'd probably armor up as much as possible. And they, if they had a shield and no armor, or even they did have armor, they very good chances they would still pick them. Shields became less necessary when you could wear really heavy armor. As to the armor in Monster Hunter, yes and no, it depends. It's not usually not like there's a big focus on armor. 
This is the other thing that I think needs to be considered in the Monster Hunter context, and is that would shields be useful in mo in the world of Monster Hunter? Because we know they were useful I in history. One of the big reasons they were really you know used a lot, and this is includes armor or shields, is because of ranged attack arrows, essentially. Okay, in reality, no one could actually block incoming arrows with the swords like they do in films. Uh, that's where armor and shields are used. But when arrow fire wasn't needed, and there were things like dueling and self-defense, with the caveat I already mentioned about self-defense, shields weren't as a higher priority uh, because they didn't need to account for arrow fire. Now, going into Monster Hunter, there are some monsters that have some ranged attacks. And so for those select few monsters, I think, yeah, a shield could be useful if it's large enough. Some of the shields are a bit too small to give you proper cover, especially if you're dealing with like breath attacks, fire and stuff. So if you're fighting a creature, say like the Nagakuga, yeah, a shield would be really useful. In actual fact, the person who's using a shield and sword combo would have a distinct advantage over a lot of the other weapons, including the ones that we've already talked about, like the long sword and the great sword, because you can protect yourself. So range attacks, yes, but if you, we would exclude range attacks, which is actually the larger majority of monsters in Monster Hunters where they're more melee, the amount, this is the reality, the amount of insane power that these, and again, it's amazing how survivable, or like, as you as a character, survive hits, bites, attacks, and things from these monsters that in reality should just destroy you, cut you in half, rip you to pieces in one hit, because the amount of force of power and strength behind these things it would be crazy. But even if we were to give that concession, okay, and have these hits have as much force as they're shown in the game and you could survive that well, the reality is a shield wouldn't protect you that much. I mean, if they show it in the game, you're able to block things with the shield, but I actually think that's not being as true to the level of strength the characters would have and the strength these monsters would have. Uh, if you were dealing with these monsters and you could use these weapons the way that, you know, you have the weight and you can lift them and things, and look, if we could discount the magical elements, and I think being able to block these giant monsters with a shield is a, is a bit of magic right there. So you try and block a big talon strike from, say, a Rathalos or something with a shield, uh, it'll just break your arm, knock you, and you go flying anyway, and you'd still probably die. That's the reality. And so if that was the case, the more logical answer would be, screw the shield, give me a weapon, a bigger weapon that gives me higher chances of killing you these creatures in one hit. They come into sleep and I can just hit them, hopefully maybe cut off that, that big claw or incapacitate or something or just dodge, okay? Dodging is what you would really want to do in terms of the defense of fighting creatures of this size. And so because of these reasons, actually, I actually think the sword and shield combo uh, wouldn't be nearly as practical as they show in Monster Hunter if we were to take a more realistic approach with the concessions we've already made, which is of course, you can actually lift and use them in a similar kind of way. And the other disadvantage, the uh, swords that you use in the sword and shield combo are more, of course, logically, shorter because uh, in reality, longer swords are heavier, harder to use in one hand, and so it makes sense. That now, having said that, the one-handed swords in Monster Hunter are easily as big, or even sometimes bigger than the two-handed swords of the real world, uh, and they would be probably 10 times heavier because of the width they have on these things. So they're still long, but the fact that you could get away with using something as big as a great sword or a long sword, and the higher damage potential, if it were to be more realistic, you wouldn't be able to defend yourself easily as well as they show in the game with a shield. Yeah, you wouldn't even bother with a sword and shield, just go with a bigger weapon. Next classic weapon in the Monster Hunter franchise are the dual blades. And there are different variants of the dual blades. There are like fist variants and sometimes they look like horns or they have like a half moon blade on the tip and stuff. And then there are ones that are a bit like, oh. So, I threw up in my mouth a bit. A bit like nunchucks. Oh gosh. Get away, get it, take it away. I'm not looking at that crap. All right, the dual blades. Uh, a lot of the disadvantages actually kind of apply with what I was talking about, the sword and shield. Less damage, less reach. Just because you can do two cuts, not really going to help you out that much. I mean, dueling, dual blades, their main advantage are, funnily enough, in dueling itself. When you're fighting a regular opponent, you can now block with one, attack with another, block with... But remember, uh, in reality, how much could you actually block against creatures this big? You're not gonna block, you know, and that's the big advantage of dual blades. Block and attack, block and, oh, and the double attack? I actually think the smaller size of these dual blades means that they wouldn't just do, like, because you would think, you know, maybe the two cuts combined could 
perhaps do as much damage as a single cut of one of these larger weapons, like the longsword or greatsword. No, I actually think they would penetrate maybe a tenth as great with just, because they, they're much smaller, even these two, one, one of these, even they look even smaller in some cases of the sword and shield ones. They are way too small to do the level of damage you want to do against huge creatures. Uh, less penetration, and remember how I was saying how cuts usually do less damage than thrusts, especially superficial ones? That's what I'm seeing with these dual blades. A lot of them you could do superficial cuts, but nothing deep enough and, and large enough, wide enough, to really incapacitate the size of some of these creatures. And so the dual blades are a bit of a... I don't think they're an effective weapon against these creatures really at all. Uh, they're not... and... and the very... Oh, actually, I'll even go there. I've already... Okay, uh, so yeah, I think the dual blades are a bit of a, a miss. Uh, not not very effective. And remember, I'm not really considering the magic you can do it. So the demon mode you can do with dual blades uh, and you can uh, fight without losing stamina and the big spinny attacks and stuff. Even like you can do this big spinny attack with a lot of superficial cuts. I mean, to take down these creatures, you need to cause massive blood loss. And I don't think superficial, like to, to do that, you need to cut deeply, hopefully hit arteries or something like that, vital organs. So thrusting really deeply or cutting really deeply. And again, I just, I don't see it with these little, little when I say little, they're about, this, they're about as big as normal arming swords, but that's heavier, wider, so in the real world, they could be really good, but you're not dueling with these monsters, okay, and so you're not getting the main advantage you get out of dueling usually in the real world, and then uh, you're not doing nearly as much damage as these other weapons, so... Don't like them, I have to say. The next weapon, the Lance, baby! Now, can you guess why I like this already? Well, I, I touched on it a little bit with the longsword segment. Why? thrusting deep penetration right into the heart, okay? And remember, thrusts are usually more lethal than cuts because you can hit vital organs, especially on the torso. And so, so far, like if I was to actually say what would be the most devastating weapon, the lance kind of, because the lance, specifically the Monster Hunter one, the length on this thing is just great. Now, when it's you're wearing it, it kind of de it detracts, it's small, and, and when you whip it out, it just grows really big all of a sudden, and you can thrust at all your enemies, and so, and the thing is about this, is that as a primary thrusting weapon, okay, this is really focusing in on that, and so, my opinion, might be one of the more lethal ones. It's a bit tougher like this. The great sword could do such insane cuts. And there's an advantage that cuts have over thrusts, and that is, again, when you swing, you have a very wide area of threat, okay? You can damage everything in this, uh, that whole area, and you can also do big wide swings to help defend yourself, ward off opponent stuff, and the monsters, they could be a bit skittish sometimes, and if you do these big swings, it can try and put them at bay. But then you can kind of thrust at them as well, but it is easier to hit an opponent with a wide cut than it is with a thrust. Think about that. When you do a big wide cut, you actually are offending an entire plane, okay? And so if we look at this whole axis, anything along this axis, wherever they are, big wide cut can still hit someone who was there or standing there. Thrust is completely different. You do a thrust, and if they were standing there, they, you would have missed. <laughs> That's the thing. Thrusts are harder to land a really good hit. But if you're trained, and we can assume that the Monster Hunter people are very well trained, this is a very lethal weapon. Now think about this, there is some historical precedent to it, because one of the really lethal weapons of the past was the Lance from on horseback, and they would go boar hunting with it, and so it's kind of a beast, and it keeps you at bay, keeps you safer, and uh, a very deadly, you can do it with speed. The the odd thing about the lance is that it has a shield with it as well. And I think the shield is about as same usefulness as the sword and shield combat, you don't really need it. And in actual fact, if you could free up that hand to put two hands on the lance and get away with an even longer lance than what they have, that would increase its offensive capacity even more so. And so I think that would actually be the more logical out. Forget the shield, two-handed lance that just is crazy. That would be awesome. Oh, and so that's what I think would actually happen if you're being a bit more realistic or if you were to try and make these weapons as practical and useful as possible, that would be the ultimate evolution. Get rid of the shield, make the lance even longer. But even with the shield in, it's still quite long, uh, long enough, and uh, its advantage for focusing on thrusting is wonderful. Now, of course, being Monster Hunter, they like to take it a step further. We saw with the, uh, you know, great sword that it had like a rocket propelled one. Well, with the lance, sometimes there are like drill head lances that have these giant 
toothy maw things that spin kind of like a massive bore drill or something like that. It just drills and rips into, oh, oh, it's vicious. And I love it. This is crazy. Over the top. Ridiculous. I think it's brilliant. Uh, yeah. So, Lance. Give a thumb up to the lance, not to the shield, get rid of the shield, but the lance, yes. The next weapon is the hammer, and this one, yeah, this is the interesting thing about it. You could assume that the greatsword weighs about as much as the hammer. The hammer just kind of concentrates the weight on a smaller area, but that means it's mainly doing superficial surface damage, no deep penetrating cuts or anything like that. And in reality, the hammer, even of the, like if we look at the size of the hammer and the size of the sword, like the greatsword, the hammer would do vastly less damage than the sword. Would it crack bone? Of course it would crack bone. If you hit, you know, one of these monsters to the side, you could crack the rib. But compare it. You get a good solid hit with this hammer to the side rib cage of one of these monsters compared to the same hit with the greatsword. The greatsword has potential of nearly cutting that creature in half, where the hammer, you'll shatter some ribs, maybe internally, but like just less damage overall. And so, uh, like, cause this is the thing. Hammers are great, and historically they are great for this reason, because of concussive damage, getting through armor, and specifically cracking skulls. They had just insane weight and focused that weight to such a fine area, but there's a difference between the historical context and the monster hunter context, and it's that in historical context, to focus such a high amount of weight in a small area, hammers were optimally designed to do that because swords are very thin. The actual striking ends were light and they don't have much mass. They relied on the really sharp edge to focus it to be able to cut deeply. But now we, let's go to the Monster Hunter world. The swords, like especially the greatsword, easily look as heavy as the hammers. And so even if you hit like a particularly bone armor kind of head on one of these creatures with the greatsword, you're still going to do probably as much concussive damage through it as if you hit it with the hammer. And so the, the greatsword is essentially a hammer as well as being an insane cutting cleaver on top of it. And the hammer is just a hammer. And so I think the size and weight of the greatsword basically nullifies the hammer's main advantages completely because you get all those advantages of the greatsword and then you don't get the other advantage of the cutting capacity of the greatsword of the hammer. And so I think because of that, that makes the hammer Mostly useless. Well, it's not useless. Of course, you know, if you had nothing, a hammer is better than nothing. But because if you had a choice between the hammer and the greatsword, like if you, if anyone was approaching this really logically, what you could, uh, what, what would naturally result in being able to use these weapons? I don't think anyone would pick the hammer. The next weapon we'll look at is the insect glaive, and I'm a little bit conflicted about it because one of the main utilities of the insect glaive is essentially a magical ability. Uh, but you could say, no, it's using the creatures in the world because you have this insect that can fly out, grab monster essence, and it comes back and it helps you charge up something in the staff that gives you more aerial ability. Because with the insect glaive, you're actually almost able to kind of jump in the air, but we could do a bit of a hand wave and say the insect glaive has some type of, I don't know, insect -y ability to, to fly in some cases, and you're able to use that as a point of leverage in the air to propel yourself even further. And so if that was the case, let's pretend that this isn't magic, it's a natural byproduct of the creatures in the world, and it's the insect blade actually is somewhat kind of like a living creature. It makes sense, insect glaive, uh, insect. Uh, and if that was the case, we can try and go with it. And then the main benefit of it is the, its main benefit in the game. It's greater mobility. Would it actually be a devastating weapon? Well, it's a bit of a spear, okay? You can certainly thrust. The thing is, though, from its size and mass, in comparison to the mass of some of these other weapons, like the lance, the, like the longsword or greatsword, its damage capacity wouldn't, wouldn't nearly be, not even as half as good as some of these larger weapons, in my opinion. And uh, so the Insect Glaive's main advantage, I think, would be, if you were to look at this more practically, would be a defensive advantage because it can keep you more mobile. And one of the best defenses against these giant monsters is moving out of the way, because I don't think you should really be able to block these strikes or attacks from the monsters. And so that would be the big advantage. And then if it can get you in a good position to strike at a really vulnerable area, like an eye or something like that, that could then help, you know, mitigate the negatives that comes with it, which would be its uh, lower damage potential. I think it would not be able to hit nearly as hard as the other weapons, but it's hard to really quantify because, uh, you know, how valuable is this greater mobility? It could keep you alive, and so it's a, it's a bit of a toss-up there. I think uh, it certainly has its place then, because there might be certain monsters absolutely where you really want to be mobile, and any other weapon you'd just die with it, and so the Insect Blade would then have a really prominent role with, and it can do damage, can it, not as much as these other big ones, but 
they can do enough damage. Next weapon, personal favourite of mine, the bow. I like archery, I like to shoot medieval war bow, 100 pound myself, and so of course I very much love the bow. Now in the Monster Hunter context, okay, I think this would probably be the prime go-to weapon out of any other weapon. But in orders of magnitude almost, in reality. If you can kill these giant monsters at a distance before they can get to you and threaten you, you would always go with it. And there is something really cool and, you know, different to these bows compared to the bows that exist in the real world, and that's their insane size. I love it. I think it's brilliant. Like, these are portable ballistas, almost. You are shooting lances, like these, you're shooting spears, right, uh, at these monsters. And depending on how strong the monster's hide is, because there are some scaly monsters that perhaps these arrows wouldn't be able to penetrate, and that means you need something of insane force, like the greatsword or the lance or something like that. That's where you might be forced to get closer to really break through the hide. But any other monster that doesn't have like insanely strong bone hide, hide scales or whatever, this weapon would be the prime weapon in my opinion. Take him out from a distance, giant lance thing shooting, and I mean, they also have a utility that they can coat their quote unquote arrows, they're not arrows, they're lances basically, uh, spears, right, with poisons and other things, and so again, absolutely, that's the strategy, keep yourself safe, keep yourself at a distance, kill the scalies, uh, you know, without them allowing them to get close, and the bow in Monster Hunter is so over the top. I love it. I think it's great. They're like, obviously the characters in Monster Hunter World are stronger than the regular human. They have superhuman strength combined with the fact that the weapons are as strong as metal and other things, but must be lighter. Otherwise, regardless of how strong you are, you would tip over. But because of that superhuman strength, they, we can just accept these people have the capacity to uh, use these bows, pull them back. This is the thing, right? To uh, shoot the projectiles that of the size that they're showing, okay, with the force that they have in the game that gives us something of uh, that we can make it an estimate based upon as to the draw strength of these bows and we're kind of in the realm of like gosh like i'm thinking at least at minimum 400 pound draw strength if not 500 pound draw strength in these bows which is insanity right highest draw strength records that you know we have in the, you know even from history in the modern days around 200 pounds humans people can draw a 200 pound bow but that's the upper upper echelon and only a number of people managed to reach in the modern day uh and of course there were some people who were able to shoot that level of bow in history as well that's so like that is so high. And granted, the war arrows they shoot are, you know, nice and beefy. But look again, look at the size of these things on their lances, okay? And so maybe 500 pound draw strength is not even enough. It'd have to be even higher. And so that gives an indication of the superhuman strength these characters must have to be able to shoot them. Uh, just on a side note, look, I started watching the Monster Hunter World movie forgive me, okay? I do want to finish it. Sometimes you just need to watch something terrible for the sake of watching terrible. But the thing, uh, there are sm it's funny what annoys you. It's like, not these giant unrealistic monsters. The thing that annoyed me when I was watching it, at the beginning of the movie, you, you do see a guy with a bow and he's got this big monster hunter bow. And when he shoots the string, the string hits and he goes, and it's like, blub, 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 and it's really floppy. The thing that annoyed like, if you ever shot real bows, like especially high powered ones, when you shoot, that string slaps tight so quick like a big and a thwack and you can feel it like you feel the vibration when it hits tight okay and for the fact that this bow is supposed to be so big supposed to be able to shoot such large arrows and the string is so floppy i was just like mm -hmm. dumb thing to get annoyed with annoyed the heck out of me all right the next one light bow gun i'm a little divided on this it's like sitting in between something like a crossbow and a gun because it can kind of shoot bullets at times uh okay so in terms of damage potential, I don't think it could do as much damage as the big bow. Look at the size of the big bow, look at the size of the arrows it shoots and things. But if this thing is more like a gun, I mean, guns are of course much smaller, so I, I, it's hard for me to make a call on. If it was only shooting or, you know, propelling things to the strength of the bow that we see on it, uh, they would be hitting with much less force, and that would to me indicate you would only want to use it against smaller game. If you're trying to use it against much, much bigger things, uh, nowhere near as good as the big bow, unless of course this is more like a firearm, like, you know, ballistic 
damage. And then that changes the game completely because if you're shooting ballistic projectiles, well, they're of course hit with much more power than even a lance launched from a bow, which would make it a very effective weapon. So it's hard to make a call. But this is kind of fixed when we get to the heavy bow gun, because is this like a bow, crossbow, or is it a firearm? It very much looks like a firearm in some images, and we don't really know if it's relying on the bow itself to shoot, but if we could equate that, that the bow on the heavy bow gun is as powerful as the actual bow that you're using, well then yeah, devastating weapon is, is basically a high powered, high caliber firearm, ballistic thing in the Monster Hunter universe, and that would be very useful. You get all the advantages I kind of talked about with bow, kill them at a range, and uh, you can shoot some very high powered stuff with it. So I, get, I, I, I don't really like the light bow gun, but heavy bow gun, yeah, I think that would be quite useful. I mean, look, it actually shows bullets. That's actually, it's, those are bullets, okay? So to me, that indicates that sometimes it's not using the bow to propel them, that it's actually using ballistic technology, chemical technology, you know, gun powder and stuff, to propel the giant bullets. And uh, so I think big, oh, big bullets against the creatures, Useful, yeah. And if you're wondering if firearm technology exists in the Monster Hunter universe, well, I think you would be contradicted by the fact that the gun lance exists. Now the gun lance, <laughs> okay. Uh, this almost nullifies the utility of the lance because if, like, think about it. Realistically, even though the move sets are different with the lance compared to the gun lance, if you actually were able to hold a gun lance and it has this big blade on the end, you should be able to technically do as much attacks, like thrusting attacks with the gun lance as you could with a normal lance. And then it's also a massive gun as well. Now, odd thing is, um, with the gun lance, it seems like the actual gun shots, the projectile shots of the lance, don't have that greater range, which is odd because that's not really how firearms work. You know, if you can propel something of such power with this level of range, it should technically still move in that direction with great power for a very long distance. You know, and so if we were to look at it more realistically, those projectiles should be have more range, simply put. And if, especially with that, utility on top of the fact that it is still a lance. This is like, really, I, if we were to say, you know, do the proper extra extrapolation of this weapon should be able to do this, this, even if the game doesn't allow it, but it should be able to do this. This might be like the best weapon in the game so far. I, I, you got projectile, ballistic fire, and you have deep penetrating, long range lance. It's a crazy weapon. And uh, like, really, the, look at the size of this gun, okay? The reality is ballistic technology trumps bow technology, okay? And so if you have a bow versus gun, the gun really should always win. And uh, raises the fun, interesting question, why are the bow still used? If, uh, you know, there are gun technology, you could say, yeah, maybe to deliver poisons or whatnot. Um, uh, still, ah, uh, the gun lance. I think that that's, the, that's the winner so far. Because uh, all the adventures I talked about, the lance, plus a big massive cannon. Interestingly enough, you could try and say there is kind of a historical equivalent to the gun lance, and that is the really long musket firearms that have bayonets attached to them. Because when you have such a weapon like that, it's not a sword, okay, it's more like a spear or a lance that's also a gun. Long board rifles that have like, you know, long barrels on them, like the old muskets, with a bayonet, that is essentially a gun lance. Historical equivalence, there you go. Now going on to the next weapon on the list, and that is the Switch Axe. And this is one, another weapon that I'm a little conflicted on because its main operation is kind of around a magic thing where you hit with the axe, which builds up energy of some type, and then you switch it, which folds, like there's a back blade, which folds on top of the uh, axe blade, turns it into a sword, it comes down, you can use it like a sword, and that unleashes all the energy. So, if you're in the Monster Hunter world, like, I don't see a logical through line why you would need a weapon of this design to use that ability. Like, why can't other weapons store energy and then release them? And so I'm not really sold on. It makes logical sense that you need a switch axe to be able to use that utility. And then if we'll just analyze the weapon as is, like uh, an axe that can turn into a sword, you basically have an axe that is not as good as the main axes in the game, or a sword that is not as good as the main sword in the game, and switching between the two doesn't really give you massive advantage. You would be better served by doing a dedicated big sword, or a dedicated big axe, and not having one that is an imperfect version of either. 
Uh, and so I, I don't really like it. But that is, of course, taking out the magical component that you can do with it. Uh, and, and again, the other thing is, like, the axe isn't as big as... The, like the size of weapons you can get and these giant weapons would be able to hit with so much more force than the sword version or the axe version of the switch axe which again makes it a less efficient weapon for this universe in my opinion I'm, I'm not a fan so while we are on the topic of transforming weapons we get to the charge blade this design is fun and inventive and don't get me wrong even the switch axe was fun and inventive i kind of liked how they had the design there and this one is also kind of fun where you have a sword and shield but you can attach the shield to the sword and then it moves up the blade of the sword and the shield becomes an axe head <laughs> that's kind of fun uh the thing to determine how practical this would be would be to ask the question, is that really needed? One, I don't think shields would be that effective in the Monster Hunter world, so you wouldn't really need a shield. And it seems like, by the context of this weapon, is that when you attach the shield to the sword, you can do more damage with it. It essentially becomes a more efficient weapon. And if you can do that, why not just make a big axe that's like that weapon without the shield, so you can use but all the time with the advantages that it gives being able to do far more damage because again i think shield wouldn't really have a prominent use in the monster hunter world unless you are fighting against monsters that are shooting big barbs at you and you need some type of defense against ranged attacks so that's really my take on it uh, and uh I don't see too much of a point, unfortunately. It is cool. I love the design, though. Now, this is the weird thing about the Monsanto world. There are actually no giant axes in the game. You have a big giant two-handed sword. There's no real big giant two-handed axe. And the Switchblade kind of fits that role of the big two-handed axe, except it's not permanently a big two-handed axe. And I think, like I said, just more logically, just give him a big two-handed axe. Problem solved. The problem is, though, is that I think a big two-handed axe would not be as good a weapon as the giant greatsword they have in this game because of the cutting ratio issue. Remember how I said the big cutting ratio on those big swords gives it a big advantage over, say, even a big axe? And so because of that, if you had the choice, you would always go big giant greatsword. And so perhaps that's why they don't have the axe, but if they don't have the axe for that reason, why they don't have the switch blade? You know, I, 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 it just comes when I'm thinking about it logically, as logically as I can at least, I just don't see much use for it when you have these other weapons available. Now we come to the last weapon, which very well, like, I think, not even very, it is easily the most ridiculous weapon in the Monster Hunter arsenal. And that is the Hunting Horn, which is like a giant bagpipe slash guitar club <laughs> thing. It's, it's so <laughs> ridiculous and dumb but I, okay <laughs> you, and the, one of the main uses of this is like you can play music with it to buff your allies o okay like again i think that's a bit of a magical use out of it as a weapon by itself as a weapon oh so, <laughs> so dumb <laughs> okay, i get it it's for fun and they know it and they're just going with it but even as a practical weapon okay it wouldn't be as good a club as like the hammer, all right? The hammer actually has a thing, and the hammer wouldn't be as good as the greatsword. And so if you had the choices and you didn't get the benefit of the music thing, yeah, I don't see anybody picking it. It's so weird and dumb. But, okay, you know, to play music now, like, it's hard to figure out what technology they have in the Monster Hunter, what, like ballistics, uh, but if anyone comes up with a portable music player, that, that can buff <laughs> and renders the thing. Can't someone just sing? Sing nicely? <laughs> they don't really need the music accompaniment if they, they got a nice melodic voice and, uh, and they could use a, <laughs> just a good weapon. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, um, i got to say this one's a ridiculous... I've, all the weapons are ridiculous, but even this one in the Monster Hunter world is like next level ridiculous. <laughs> And it just makes me chuckle because it's Monsanto. It's Monsanto, right? Which kind of is a good way to round off this uh, video, analyzing the classic main weapons of the Monster Hunter franchise. And uh, overall, I think it's great. I love them. They're over the top. And interestingly enough, even if we were to give the concessions that we have, you know, from the beginning of this video, we can see which weapons would be more practical and useful compared to other weapons which is really cool, and I find it a lot of fun. I hope you have as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And of course, I hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell.